It is vitally important that the listeners realize the following: that 99.99% of unbelievers, as well as of Muslims, have no idea or have never heard of the Charter of Umar. After the rapid expansion of the Arabian Muhammadan dominion in the seventh century, Muhammadan leaders were required to work out a way of dealing with non-Muslims, who remained in the majority in many areas for centuries. The solution was to develop the notion of the dimma, or protected person. The dimmi were required to pay an extra tax, but usually were unmolested. This compares well with the treatment meted out to non-Christians in Christian Europe. The Pact of Umar is supposed to have been the peace accord offered by the Caliph Umar to the Christians of Syria, a pact which formed the pattern of later interaction. Historians are not unanimous as to which Umar this charter or covenant is actually attributed, whether Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second Caliph, or the Umayyad Umar the second. In the final analysis. It is not important to whom it should be attributed, since the conquering Muhammadan Muslims implemented it, and have been doing so for the last fourteen hundred years, and continue to do so in the twenty-first century in most Muhammadan states. The following is from Al Turtushi, Siraj Al Muluk, pages two hundred twenty-nine to two hundred thirty. We heard from Abd Al Rahman ibn Ganam as follows: When Umar ibn Al Khattab May Allah be pleased with him. Accorded a peace to the Christians of Syria, we wrote to him as follows: In the name of Allah, the Merciful and Compassionate, this is a letter to the servant of Allah Umar ibn Al Khattab, commander of the faithful, from the Christians of such and such a city. When you came against us, we asked you for safe conduct, aman, for ourselves, our descendants, our property, and the people of our community. And we undertook the following obligations toward you: We shall not build in our cities or in their neighbourhood new monasteries, churches, convents, or monk cells, nor shall we repair by day or by night such of them as fall in ruins or are situated in the quarters of the Muslims. We shall keep our gates wide open for passersby and travellers. We shall give board and lodging to all Muslims who pass our way for three days. We shall not give shelter in our churches or in our dwellings to any spy, nor bide him from the Muslims. We shall not teach the Quran to our children. We shall not manifest our religion publicly, nor convert any one to it. We shall not prevent any of our kin from entering Islam if they wish it. We shall show respect toward the Muslims, and we shall rise from our seats when they wish to sit. We shall not seek to resemble the Muslims by imitating any of their garments, the kalansua, the turban, footwear, or the parting of the hair. We shall not speak as they do, nor shall we adopt their kunyas. We shall not mount on saddles, nor shall we gird swords, nor bear any kind of arms, nor carry them on our persons. We shall not engrave Arabic inscriptions on our seals. We shall not sell fermented drinks. We shall clip the front of our heads. We shall always dress in the same way wherever we may be, and we shall bind the zuna round our waists. We shall not display our crosses or our books in the roads or markets of the Muslims. We shall use only clappers in our churches very softly. We shall not raise our voices when following our dead. We shall not show lights on any of the roads of the Muslims or in their markets. We shall not bury our dead near the Muslims. We shall not take slaves who have been allotted to Muslims. We shall not build houses overtopping the houses of the Muslims. When I brought the letter to Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he added, "We shall not strike a Muslim. We accept these conditions for ourselves and for the people of our community." And in return, we receive safe conduct. If we in any way violate these undertakings for which we ourselves stand surety, we forfeit our covenant, dimma, and we become liable to the penalties for contumacy and sedition. Umar ibn Al Khattab replied, "Sign what they ask, but add two clauses and impose them in addition to those which they have undertaken." 
they are. They shall not by any one made prisoner by the Muslims. And whoever strikes a Muslim with deliberate intent shall forfeit the protection of this pact. It is imperative that our listeners comprehend the following. 1. The Mohammedans were imposing de degrading and discriminatory rules on the conquered peoples in their own homeland by the aggressors. 2. The Mohammedan Muslims were protecting the natives from whom? 3. Every condition above represents utter contempt for the religious beliefs and feelings of the subjugated peoples, for their culture, their heritage, and their dignity. 4. Although generally they were unmolested, it did not stop the leaders to have them massacred whenever they needed to distract the Mohammedans in times of stress. 5. While the Mohammedan Muslims in the majority of their countries continue to implement many of the above against all unbelievers, they, with an obscene degree of hypocrisy, demand all human rights in the democracies, and at the same time, disloyally, intend to bring down the institutions of the host countries to their abysmal level of intolerance, ignorance, and stupidity. I would like to leave any further conclusions or comments to our listeners regarding the mercy and compassion of Mohammedan Islam vis-à-vis -vis the people of the book.